Hello, YouTube. What's this? Ah. Time to learn. AOB. Welcome back to another sweats tutorial. Imagine a world where you don't have to update offsets and your game hack can adapt to updates on its own. It sounds too good to be true, right? Actually, no, because today we are going to learn how to AOB pattern scan in C sharp. This method will search through the whole process and find the signature we provide. This is really overpowered, you see, because then we just have to find patterns that lead to whatever we wanted and let the scanner do its thing. This opens a lot of doors to trainers that were impossible before and we can enhance our C-sharp skills even further. But before we head into it, make sure to join the C-sharp army by subscribing, liking and writing a really cute comment. If you scored, should be available. And before you try anything of this, remember to always read the terms of agreement slash usage for your test game and be aware of their rules. Now enjoy this showcase. Welcome to today's tutorial. I'm very excited to show you guys today's project because we will create our very own AOB scanner. So this AOB scanner can search for an array of bytes within a process. It doesn't matter the module or if it's dynamic memory, it will find the address of that array of bytes. So for this example, I will be testing on a salt cube and we will try to find the instruction that decrements the ammo. So let's copy and paste that inside of this method here and run it. And would you look at that? We have two addresses. Let's check it out if they lead to our ammo decrement instruction. So here I have the game. We have 20 ammo. Let's go into the memory viewer and hit Ctrl G and paste our address. Here we have a de decrement operation and we can see that the bytes match FF, FF, 0E, 57. They match and we can replace this with code that does nothing just to showcase that we did find the instructions that we wanted. So this can be used for any array of bytes that you would want to. And we can also add wildcards, which means change some of these bytes to ignore or be ignored in the search. So let's add some more. There you go. So we still got the address and we used wildcards. So you can use this to create patterns that will work for the game even if the game updates and so on. So I'm really excited to show you guys this tutorial. Now enjoy. All right, so we will start this tutorial by finding an instruction inside of the game Assault Cube that we will use for the AOB scan. So we have Sheet Engine here, we have Assault Cube. I will search for the ammunition. We know that this is the ammo address. So if we go into edit, settings, debugger options, then use VEH debugger, we can right click, then find out what writes to this address. Click on yes. And then we can shoot a couple of times. And here we can see five counts of this instruction, which decrements the value of ESI dereferenced or however you say it. So this is an instruction that would remove ammunition from our clip or magazine. So in this tutorial, we will search for this, these or this instruction so we can use it later on. So let's copy this by clicking on one line and then shift click on some lines down then right click on copy the clipboard by its only no address and then we can paste it in our notepad deletes ammo you can for example 
click on the replace with code that does nothing and we would have unlimited ammo. So we can search for this code instead of holding this address in our, our application and it would work after the game updates probably instead of just holding this address. So let's create this AOB scanner now. So the first thing will be to create a new console app project in Visual Studio. Let's name it something with AOB and the .NET framework, let's say choose .NET 6. We will remove this template code and then create a new class called Memory Scanner. This will be the only class we create today and it will hold the scanning methods and some process information. The class variables will be a process, which is the target process, and then an int pointer that will hold the process handle. But because we will use some Windows functions and imported functions, we need some writes for these functions to work. We will have some constants that represent these writes in uint. You can learn more about these constants or access keys on the Microsoft documentation page. Now the imports will be open process, read process memory, virtual query x, and then destruct for the memory basic information. The open process will return as an int pointer, a handle for our process with desired access. Then read process memory explains itself. It will read the process memory or just a little bit, a chunk that we specify. Now, virtual query X will get information on the memory pages inside of our process so we can decide if it should be read or not and the memory basic information is that information which includes the base address allocation base allocation protect region size state protect and type But before we will do any iteration through our process, we have to convert this byte string to a usable byte array. To do that, we will create two arrays, one string element and then a byte array converted bytes. We will split the byte string into these elements, which will contain the byte in or the bytes in decimal and our wildcards. After that, we can create the converted bytes to the size of these elements and just sort out all the elements that contain our wildcard signature and give the rest of the elements its usual value. If the value is set to zero, we will skip it later in the search. Now, because our target process and process handle will change from whenever we create our scanner, we will have to include them in our constructor. So in our constructor, we will just take a process and set the target process to that process and then get the process handle from open process and then the process ID plus some access constants. Finally, we can create the scan memory method. This method will take in a byte string that we will want to search for, and we will create some variables. So we will have a list of int pointers that will be the addresses that match our bytes array. We also will have a 
an int pointer for the current address in the iteration and then a variable that holds our converted byte array from our byte string. Then with these variables, we can start to iterate through the memory. Now the memory contains of these memory pages or memory regions that has certain protection and certain information tied to them. So we will get these information pages with the memory basic information structure and then check that it is readable and these include the check of the state that it's committed and if it is protected or not and so on if it isn't we can just go ahead and read it now to do that we will create a buffer a byte array buffer of the region size and then use read process memory with that buffer and the process handle base address of our certain memory region and read all of its information. If it's read, we will now loop through each byte and compare it to our signature array. Now the first loop will be of the memory region's bytes. We will deduct our signature byte array dot length to not step out of bounds. Then inside of this loop, we will have a boolean match that is set to true and it will be set to false if there is a mismatch. Then we will have another nested for loop that checks with the bytes above if they match our signature byte array. We will do that by checking each of the bytes in our signature byte array if it's equal to zero or if it's equal to the buffer's current byte. And if it isn't, we can say that it's a fail. They didn't match. And if the match wasn't set to false, we can add it to the results. So we add the base address of the memory basic information and the i iteration. We continue this until there is no memory left and then we return all of the results. We will also add at the end the region size to our current address to move to the next memory region. That's very important. All right, so let's try our scanner out. We will get the sweat nuget package so we can easily access the process. And then we will create an instance of the sweat class, but also our class or memory scanner. If the code that I'm writing now confuses you, please watch the how to hack any game tutorial that I've made. It should explain. Then we will scan for our byte array that we found in the beginning of this video. I know it's a bit different signature here, but it's uh, still the same base. So it's a bit longer, but yeah, it's still the same. Then we will loop through all of the results and write them to the console with the hex base. Now, before we start the program, make sure to fix this small error that I made. It should be does not equals to. All right, so let's try out our scanner now. I have my byte array or my signature that I want to find, and here I have the game. So let's try and run it. And we can see that we have our address. Now, if you remember from the showcase, this is the exact instruction that we were looking for. So let's go into the memory viewer and confirm it. We were looking for the instruction that removes ammunition from when we shoot. If we remove its power, we should have unlimited ammo. All right, so we found our signature. Let's uh, use some wildcards as well now. And run it again. 
We have a lot of wild cards now. It should take a while. There you go. We have a lot of results now. Still our E9. Our address that we wanted to find. Or our array of bytes that we wanted to find. And you can see here that it matches FF0E and at the end 14. So that's how you AOB scan in C sharp. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I'll see you in the next one.